said to us how NATO came about. And he had said to us that indeed we need to think out of the box and we need to prefer and see how we can have more university in Lagos. It's not just by mouth that Lagos is the biggest economy, is the biggest state, is the most prosperous state in the whole of Latin African countries. Yeah. Last week today currently has three other campuses apart from Mojo. There's the campus in Ekwe that we're going to revamp and we're going to redo very well. There's the College of Education in Ikeja that we're doing several, several projects there as we speak. Several projects there. And there's also the small campus in Badagri which takes care of uh, prelims, which I've told you the vice chancellor will need to I will scale it up. But it's more around what are we going to do with other tertiary institutions we have. And so your government has decided to convert two of the existing higher education into universities. The Jago State House of Assembly have sat and they passed and we have started conversation, extensive conversation with the Nigerian University Commission. And very soon we'll be converting because of what the chairman also has said. Because of the fact that we need to be proactive and think ahead, what are the things that we need to have as a people? What are the requirements of today that can meet the needs of tomorrow? Everybody wants to have a university degree. And so the Lagos State Polytechnic is going to be turned into Lagos State University of Science and Technology. So all the issues around having an institute of cassava, of cocoa, we will take it up in that university. The Adenon of Soya College of Education at the Moped in Ekwe is going to be turned into a university of education. Gone are those days when people will come out with NCEs that are not comparable. Everybody must have a university education. And if you are not meant to go to university, we are providing technical colleges of education, technical colleges where from the secondary school you can indeed go to your technical colleges. Not only that, we are going to be turning a lot of our public schools into comprehensive schools so that skills straight from the secondary school you can indeed know that you have the path to developing yourself in other skills. We understand that not everybody, if you don't have to be in the four walls of the university, you don't have to, we must provide more time for you. But if you're going to be in the university, let us be an university that is competitive, that is forward-looking, and that can meet any other university standard anywhere in the world. That's what we're about, and that's what we're going to do. Thank you very much. I commend NASU alumni for remaining passionate about the continued growth and development of our university. Thank you for being more the ambassador of this school. Thank you for remaining loyal to LASU long after you have passed through this school. Thank you for maintaining the LASU ideas and values. All over the world, alumni associations have become strategic players and partners in educational and governmental issues. I'm proud of your association's commitment to ensuring that LASU becomes one of the best the world. I want to assure you that this administration's goal, and we will continue, that is our administration's goal, and we will continue to create an elite environment for last week to thrive and compete with any other university in the world. I feel honored to present today's lecture, the critical role of education and technology in nation building and economic recovery cannot be overemphasized. In global setting, Innovative education and technology have become a critical economy with creating and prosperity that is becoming almost impossible to make substantial social economic progress without two variables. Our administration understands the key role that education and technology plays in transforming the society, which explains why we made education one of our strong pillars under our team's agenda, traffic management and transportation, health and education, health and environment, education and technology, making Lagos a 21st century 
entertainment and tourism, governance and security. In the last few years, we have made expensive investments in education and technology. But the major take back from the COVID pandemic and its impact on how we live, how we socialize, and how we conduct our business, the need for we policymakers to determine how we can further use technology and a sustainable and an economic growth. The topic before me today is quite broad, as I have been charged with the duty of creating a new nexus between educational leadership, technology, and economic prosperity in Nigeria. Must, however, establish beforehand that our complete economic recovery will be dependent on deliberate collaboration between the town and the ground. There must be intentional effort by all stakeholders to promote equitable and quality education so that the products of our schools are equipped with the critical skills needed to provide lasting solutions to our social economic problems. There is also no better time than now to deepen the productive discourse or now we can continue to utilize technology to make it more meaningful. Co-founder Bill Gates said, information technology and businesses are becoming inextricable interwoven. I don't think anybody can talk meaningfully about one without talking about the other. The famous American economist, Mr. Ben Bernanke, who at one time was um, also um, a great scholar, also said that without technology and, and quality education, it is merely impossible to achieve economic stability. He said that I hope, the best solution to income equality is providing a high quality education for everybody in a highly technological, globalized economy People without economic education will not be able to improve their economic situation, unquote. I am an advocate of broad-based digitalization, as well as inclusive governance and education for complete economic recovery. You will agree with me that although each country has its economic dynamics, the quote of Bernanke aptly sums up the fundamental ingredients needed to make our people financially independent and to place our country on the path of complete economic sustainability, which quality education truly serves as an equalizer. We must therefore continue to ensure that our schools produce graduates who truly understand economic processes and are able to utilize technology for lasting economic prosperity. There is no doubt that the educational system will continue to play a major role in supplying the skilled labor needed drive economic recovery. I am of the opinion that educational leaders must be proactive in reducing learning inequality by adapting innovative, innovative pedagogical approach. This brings me to what we will be able to achieve with the Art of Technology program, which is a strategic initiative. So we have what we call the Art of Technology program. And it's a strategic initiative that will give grants to about four, of about 400 million to tech startups. This event is to encourage young people with fantastic ideas on how technology can be used to achieve the greater Lagos agenda and to also be able to achieve the smarter Lagos agenda that we talked about. And I want to employ all of you, even if all of you cannot come. The Art of Technology event is tomorrow. So, so that you know that we're not just talking it, we're actually it. And it's the third in Syria at uh, the Korean Town Hotel tomorrow. And not only will we identify young innovators in the technology space, we'll be given grants of almost 400 million to a lot of tech startups that are being innovative, that are thinking through solutions that can help not only our technical institutions, but that can also help government have innovative solutions that Lagos State be able to compete with other mega cities of the South. So the investment on all of you tomorrow to see the caliber of the young innovative graduates that have taken up the plan. Can you imagine a world without teachers? I cannot. We cannot have economic leaders without fully equipped teachers to invite them with the skills necessary for our economic recovery. Because they do not joke with these teachers. In 
2020, we partnered with Microsoft to implement what we call the ECO Excel, an acronym for Excellence in Child Education. The program has radically altered public education in Lagos as teachers are now empowered to deliver quality and effective teaching at the same level with their counterparts from around the world. An estimated 14,000 primary school teachers have now been equipped to benefit from the initiative and over 500 pupils will possibly be impacted. So they all have a tablet under the Equal Excel, which all of our primary school teachers are using. And what they do with the tablet? They have the same curriculum, they have the same agenda. So if you are in Badami, if you are in Ekpe, if you are in Lagos Island, you will have the same kind of curriculum so that the input and the output will be the same. <clears throat> we deliberately went to primary school. It's not meant to be our fault, but we said that if you don't start well with primary school, by the time you get to secondary school, it will be difficult for us to correct them. So we said that we're going to put money in the primary education, and that's how we're doing that, and we're believing really that. The numbers and the output and the outcome we're seeing is very encouraging. So we've trained over 18,000 on how to use Microsoft Office. We've also served other training that have been developed on this tablet. We have also been proactive in how we run our skill acquisition and vocational center. Our vocational centers have become practical training ground for our people. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is usually politically correct to say Lagos State has a resilient economy. But without careful fiscal planning, accountability and a responsible governance, it will not be really difficult for us to bounce back to the negative effect of the pandemic on our economy. We are still on the path of economic recovery and must however admit that the systemic use of technology has contributed to how quickly we have been able to overcome our economic challenge as a state. A case in point is how we have fully digitalized our land administration system so that we have not only a successful block revenue throughput, we will also have simplified land regularization process as well as fully automated that system into a one-stop shop for all transactions related to land administration in the state. Another case in point is the tremendous impact of technology on revenue generation in the state. There has been a remarkable progress, progressive increase since 1999 when the state IGR at that time was below 600 million, and now, you know, in the first quarter of this year, we're doing a little over 40 billion. But that's not where we want to be. We want to get to 60 and 70 and 80 because there's enough capacity in the state to do that. Apart from the restructuring of the state internal revenue service, a major driver of our achievement that the innovation, that, this, that the production of real time understanding of our economic research will provide for us the needed expanded investment in digital infrastructure. We must also continue to make substantial technological investment in our academic ecosystem. And that's why we cannot leave last way alone. We need to make significant substantial technological investment in our academic ecosystem. Because it's from here that you can see the organic food. It's from a place a citadel of learning like the likes of Lasso that we're all truly proud of that can have that homegrown capability of the kind of skills, of the kind of future that will be coming out from the great students that are Lasso -wise. And I want to say that in addition to attacks and systems, we should also review completely um, what we talk about in the digital economy. And in doing this, we believe that not only will our nation be on a path for, for, from, from an economic to a, a digital transformational group for our economy indeed will be on that path. And Lagos State already has seen the path and will on the, on the direction to do that. And so we also want LASU to also join us in that path. LASU must not only be you know, a citadel of learning, must not only be the best university Nigeria must also be an economic driver for themselves, like Chancellor said, that LASU must also be able to think out of the box and be very digitalized and enabled, be economically also viable, so that indeed you can 
ranked among the best in the world, the best in Africa, and certainly the best in Nigeria. Last one, na elele. Last one, na Last one, na elele.
must be a team whose whose responsibility is to link up with them so that they can assist this party to grow. On that note, I want to congratulate you, sir. Thank you very much. Get that, that's what. Yeah.